All right, welcome back. This is Free Build Extreme, episode six. I am your host, JVN. I run the YouTube channel, JVN Gaming. If you want to check me out, well, link is down in the description, and I would love to see you following along on my channel and watching uh, some of the other videos I do. I play a lot of PC Building Simulator, play some other games as well. Uh, but yeah, would love to see you over there. So this is, like I said, Free Build Extreme, episode six. We've done a few really cool, fun uh, builds so far in the Free Build Extreme series. And today, well, I'm hoping we're going to do another another one. Um, so in the most recent update to PC Building Simulator, which is version 1.11, we're on 1.11.2 now, um, we got, well, we got a bunch of stuff. But one of the cool things that we got is we got some water-cooled graphics cards because we uh, really only went up to like the 20 series of graphics cards as far as water-cooled cards for a while. But now we've got RTX 30 series water-cooled cards. We've got some RX 6000 series uh, cards from AMD. So we've got the 6800 XT, the 6900 XT. As far as 30 series from NVIDIA, we've got got 3070, a single 3070, a few 3080s, and a few 3090s, all water cooled. So we've got some different versions from um, Corsair. They really they, they put their water blocks on a bunch of different cards, including like the reference card, the Founders Edition cards. They actually built them for the, like, the Strix cards. Uh, it's pretty cool. And then EVGA did their own water blocks for their own cards. So we've got all these new, really exciting water cooled graphics card options. So I wanted to build a build that kind of showcases that build a build i want to build a pc that showcases that and so what we're going to do is we're going to build it inside of this this case is the corsair carbide spec 06 rgb in white we're going to do kind of a black and white build which will be fun uh on its own and then what i like about this case is it's got a vertical gpu mount so we're going to show off the uh this new these new water cool graphics cards and get a good look at them in a vertical orientation and this is actually a cool case this is a pretty standard ATX case, nothing too crazy, but we're gonna be able to cram a lot of good stuff in here and have a kind of a good white, like black and white theme going on. And we're gonna go fully water cool for the whole system. So let's just get right down to it. We've got the front panel, the rear panel removed. Let's pull off uh, this front panel. Well, I guess we have both side panels. Now we got the front panel. Let's do this dust filter here. We got a dust filter up top. We're going to take out the standard Mortoni Heataway 120 fans that come with it. Uh, I don't know what case fans actually would come with this case in real life. Probably not Mortoni, but hey. Uh, okay, let's get our motherboard going. For this, we are going to go with Threadripper. Just because I haven't built it in a while, it's kind of fun. I like the Asus RG Strix TRX40-E Gaming. It is an EATX board, but it will fit here. We aren't going to be able to get any of these XLATX monster motherboards in here. We can get this one in here. It's a very nice motherboard. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's nice. It's, it's good. It looks nice. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and get our Threadripper CPU put in, and we're not gonna do anything too crazy, as if that doesn't mean it's Threadripper, it's kind of crazy. But we're gonna 3960X, so 24 core, 48 thread, uh, very, very capable CPU, certainly. Um, okay, so under the here, we got a drive bay here. We've got a couple M.2 slots there. I think we've just got the two on this board. We don't have a Dim.2 or anything like that. Uh, we've got a whopping eight Dim slots to do our memory. It's weird. I like, did I close that? Did I move and it closed? I don't know what happened there. Uh, let's go ahead and get a little bit of storage put in here. And let's just do, oh, what, what, what am I typing? M.2. Let's do some M.2 storage. Uh, we'll be a little bit limited since some of the thicker ones aren't going to fit, but we could do some of this Patriot Viper that is PCIe Gen 4. Viper! And we can do a couple of those. So that gets us four terabytes of storage. That'll take care of our storage needs for now, I think. Uh, let's, let's see. I'm trying to think of the order. You know what, what order should we do it in? Let's get some thermal paste on here because it's something you don't want to forget. We'll get a big old glob on there. And then let's get our water block installed on the CPU. Because like I said, we're going to go for full water cooling on this build. And as far as our Threadripper blocks, we got some new um, we got some new uh, CPU blocks for non-Threadripper CPUs in the last update as well that are pretty cool. I'm going to go with Corsair's Hydro X series in white. Trying to bring a little bit more white into this because this motherboard is very black. Um, we're going to bring some more white into the build though. I'm going to go ahead and open up all of these memory clips to allow us to seat in our memory and we're gonna go with some white memory so we're gonna go ahead and search for white and i'm probably just gonna look for corsair's vengeance rgb pro in white and they've got it goes all the way up to 3600 megahertz speed eight gig capacity so we are gonna go ahead and slap eight of those into this that should take care of things 64 gigs of memory will do us just fine and it gives us a little more white, which is nice. I like the white. Okay, 
Good. Uh, let's spin around back. Let's get a power supply in here. This is going to be kind of a Corsair heavy build also. Uh, the case is Corsair. A lot of the water cooling is going to be Corsair, especially you're talking about the new uh, water blocks they're doing for graphics cards that's from Corsair, which is cool. That like really mirrors real life well, which is kind of fun. Uh, and I guess while we're at it, we might as well just do a Corsair power supply. Just I mean, just feels right. Just, just might as well just commit fully to doing this. A uh, thousand watts should cover things nicely. Okay, that's in there looking good. Uh, let's get our water cooling stuff set up. So uh, we're gonna stick, I'm already locked into Corsair. Of course we have more options than that, but I guess I'm gonna stick with Corsair. We're gonna go with that. So we, we've we got uh, room for a 360 rad in the front and we've got the XR5 or the XR7. The XR7 is massively thick. It's hilariously thick. We're not gonna go with it in this case because it's just a little bit tight. We're gonna do the XR5 there in the front at 360 mil, and then we're gonna do an XR5. I don't think I can get a 280. No, it's gotta be a 240. We're gonna go with the XR5 up here, otherwise we can actually get the XR7 in, but it is very chonky and it is weird looking and very thick and I don't like it. So we're not gonna do that. I also think it's gonna make plumbing things a bit hard. Um, so that's going to be our radiator setup. Let's get a case fan in the back to just make it look the same. We'll go with the Corsair ML120. The same fans that are used on these radiators. I believe they look very, very, very similar. That'll take care of that. Um, where's that pump reservoir going to go? That's always the question you should be asking yourself when you're doing water cooling. Um, considering we're going to do a vertical mount GPU, we're going to be a little bit more limited on what's going to fit here. But I know already, uh, I already know that we can fit some of these EK ones and they're gonna lay down just like that. And it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be perfect just nestled behind our graphics card. And let me show you exactly what that looks like. So we'll open up this panel, we'll remove our little PCI brackets there and then we'll have room to vertically mount a water cool GPU in the case. And like I said, we got a bunch of new options. So uh, I don't know, what should we choose? They're actually kind of fun. So, um, We've got, like I said, Corsair water blocks for a bunch of different cards. So we've got them for uh, like the reference card. We've got some 6800, 6900 XT there. We've got the uh, Founders Edition. So they're super cute little short ones. I just want to show it, honestly. These are 200 millimeters long. It's so cute. Oh, it has the ridiculous plug. Of course it does. Oh, I've never even looked at that. That's so, that's so cool. But this would be like great for a small form factor build, right? And the Founders Edition cards for the RTX 30 series are, they're, they're really weird, like little PCBs. They have like the, the V here where the cooler comes together. But yeah, if you were to put a water block on it, it's gonna be a super short little card. Um, I have a Founders Edition 3080 and I've taken it apart. And yeah, it is, it is so cute how small the actual card is. It's all cooler. Um, but that's what that looks like, and of course get the you know the the 12 pin to dual 8 pin fun thing here that kind of looks terrible. Uh, Nvidia, hello. But that's what that looks like. 200 mil. That's pretty hilarious. Very cute. Uh, we're not gonna go with that though because it's kind of dorky looking. Um, so we've got that. The Founders Edition ones, obviously. Uh, we've also got like the Ventus. So that's the MSI Ventus card. So there's water blocks for that. We've got water blocks for the Strix cards. And then we go into EVJs. And I've shown EVJ in the last Free Build Extreme video I did. I built like an all of EVGA build and that was pretty fun. Um, but let's go ahead and stick with a, uh, let's stick with the Strix card. So this is gonna be 285 millimeters long. We're gonna go with an RTX 3090. And it's gonna fit in here quite nicely. And that I mean, that reservoir, that, that pump res combo just fits in back there so nicely and it clears the, the PCIe riser there. It's just like, it was all made to go together and it just, it just works. And it's gonna actually plumb together pretty nicely. So that's kind of what the build's gonna look like there. So all we've really got left is we gotta connect our cables. I'm gonna go with white cables. And actually maybe we'll, maybe we'll run the plumbing first and then we can actually do the cabling. Yeah, so let's do that. We're gonna go, I'm feeling white. We're gonna go hard line, white hard line, and let's do white fittings, I think is gonna work out for us. And then, uh, so we're gonna go pump res to graphics card, graphics card to top radiator, top radiator back to CPU, CPU to front rad, radiator back to res. That's the plan right there, that's the plan. So we're gonna go like this, we're gonna go into this one, 
and we're gonna kind of angle that out to look sort of nice. We're gonna have a little bit of angle on some of these. I'm kind of okay with it actually. I want hard lines where I can get them, but it doesn't need to be perfect, so. Get that connected here. Snap a nice angle there. Have that kind of symmetry going on like that. I can't quite close that up the way I want, but I should be able to do this and then kind of snap this down and create some sort of symmetry there. Yeah, that looks good. And okay, so bring this down. I'm gonna do like a hard out. This The CPU block's kind of nice. We've got a fitting on the left and then on the right. So I'm gonna do a hard out like this from that side. And then we're gonna do a hard angle in the other direction to create. This is gonna be like, you know, lots of symmetry going on here. Let's go ahead and remove this angle. It's unhappy with me for now, but we're gonna fix that. Something like that. And then let's see, how did we do on angles? It's a little interesting, but Actually, that's not too bad. That'll work. And then we'll come down and do this last one. This one's a little weird because the angle of that fitting comes out of the pump res combo is uh, it's a little quirky. I don't want to swing this down. Ooh, what do I want to do, actually? Maybe I want to come up like this and come... Uh, actually... Let's go out. And this, and then snap that back and over. That looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, I like that. Nice. Okay, and then we're just gonna do, I'm feeling like white coolant, but we can't do that yet because we need to actually connect everything. We need to actually cable everything up. Okay, so for cabling, we're gonna go with white cabling. Let's get everything connected. So on this GPU, we've got three eight pins on the Strix card here. So let's go with that. This is all gonna come together pretty well though, I think. Let's get our reservoir connected to the motherboard. Uh, case to the motherboard. I'm gonna go rear fan to the motherboard and then we're gonna daisy chain. Actually, this is, our, this is my, uh, my other power connector to the motherboard and then we're gonna kinda daisy chain our radiator to our rear fan and our front radiator to our top radiator and then we've got our big power connector on the motherboard. And that should be everything connected. Should be, should all be done. Let's check. Yep, looks good. So I'm gonna get an operating system installed. We're gonna do a little bit of benchmarking just to see how we do on, uh, I'm curious to see how our Threadripper 3090 combo does here and uh, we'll see how she performs. All right, so we got everything set up here and good to go. I did, uh, you know, forget to put coolant in the computer. So I, I blue screened on my uh, my first three mark attempts. So we got coolant there. I went with uh, the opaque white coolant to give us as much white as we've got. Cause there was a lot of black here with all this, all this Corsair gear. I've got a bit of black, but I think it looks pretty good with the white opaque coolant and it runs much better. And as far as temps go, we've got 72C or so is the max in the CPU and 74 and a half degrees Celsius uh, on the GPU. So not bad. Uh, yeah, not not bad for full bore with a 24 core Threadripper CPU and an RTX 3090, which is definitely uh, no, no slouch of a GPU. So uh, and what does that get you? It gets you a 15,421 overall. That's 16,039 on the graphics and 12,661 on the CPU. Now this CPU is of course like very capable of producing a much higher score uh, if you overclock it. In fact, the 3960X is one of the best overclocking CPUs in the game, um, but I'm not overclocked. I am stock and I'm just running XMP settings. So that's kind of what it looks like um, at stock. Now, if we put some of these pieces back together, I guess we can put our dust filter on the front. That's probably a good idea. As far as up top, we really don't need a dust filter. We are exhausting. Did it really turn the computer? Okay, uh, I guess it's true, it is connected. That is sort of connected, so that makes some sense. Um, really don't need a dust filter up top though because that's set to exhaust. In fact, I wouldn't recommend running a dust filter on that kind of setup. You could, if you really want to, you can do it, of course. I just, there's no really no benefit in it. Put our back panel on and then our front side panel there. And that is uh, a nice looking computer, if I do say so myself. It's very Corsair heavy, black and white theme, and we get to see that really cool Corsair water block on the RTX 39 Strix edition. So uh, there it is. I hope you guys enjoy. This has been Free Build Extreme Episode 6, and I've been your host, JVN, 
And uh, be sure to stay tuned for more episodes of Free Build Extreme, and be sure to subscribe to the PC Building Simulator official YouTube channel. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. See ya.